പഞ്ചകർമ്മ വെൻ എവർ വി ഹെയർ ഓർ സെർച്ച് അബൌട്ട് ആയുർവേദ ആൻഡ് ആയുർവേദിക് ട്രീറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് തിങ് ദാറ്റ് കംസ് ടു അവർ മൈൻഡ് വിൽ ബി പഞ്ചകർമ്മ ബട്ട് മോസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ ടൈം പീപ്പിൾ ഓഫൺ കൺഫ്യൂസ്ഡ് ഓർ മിസ്ലീഡ് ദിസ് പഞ്ചകർമ്മ ട്രീറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ്സ് വിത്ത് മസാജ് ട്രീറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ സോ വാട്ട് എക്സാക്ട്ലി പഞ്ചകർമ്മ ഈസ് ആസ് ദ വേർഡ് സ്പ്ലിറ്റ് ഇൻ ടു ടു വേർഡ്സ് പഞ്ച വിച്ച് മീൻസ് ഫൈവ് and karma which means procedure panchakarma means five procedures so what are the five procedures that comes under panchakarma that is vamana dermis therapy virajana purgation or loose motion therapy two types of vasti vasti means enema asthapana vasti the enema with decoction anuvasana vasti the enema with oil nasya nasal installation therapy so all these five procedures together to be named as panchakarma for understanding the panchakarma procedures better one need to understand the human body according to ayurveda in ayurveda tridoshas that is vada pitta and kapha and its balance and normalcy in our body is very important so when this vada pitta and kapha these tridoshas are in a balanced state it's considered our body is in a healthy stage and when there is an imbalance came across these three doshas means if they are in excess or minor this leads to disease condition here comes the importance of panchakarma to bring back the normalcy and balance of doshas in our body that is by removing excess of doshas like if there is kapha dosha pragoba excess of kapha dosha and other toxins we go for vomiting therapy vamana for pitta dosha we go for virajana and to specify vada we go for vasti vamana now let's talk about the first panchakarma procedure that is vamana emesis therapy vamana is removing of excess kapha doshas and toxins from our body through emesis mainly vamana is performed in two ways that's depending upon the condition and the chronicity of the disease it is determined one is sadhya vamana instant emesis therapy another one is purva karma yukta vamana or therapeutic emesis which is usually done after the procedures like sneha panam and all here sadhya vamana is a one day procedure here in sadhya vamana the patient is administered with kashayam or decoction or milk in order to induce vomiting and expel the doshas and toxins out from the body while classical vamana or purva karma yukta vamana which is done mainly after this sneha pana and all while purva karma yukta vamana is a collaborative effort where a patient needs to go through many phases like sneha panam swedanam where a patient needs to go through various phases of procedures so this entire procedure is taken around 15 to 18 days usually it depends upon various aspects like the disease condition of patient and all but generally 15 to 18 days is needed so how it is performed first the patient needs to go through a purva karma phase where our body is been prepared before the main procedures like vamana so how we performed after deepana pajana karma were introducing of this appetizers and carminatives in taking of this appetizers and carminatives is done it's mainly done for improving our digestive fire before the sneha panam phase the next phase is sneha panam phase where a patient is supposed to intake grida or taila which means ghee or oil or any fat contents which been prescribed by the physician after analyzing the condition of the patient and the digestive fire this sneha panam phase usually extends up to 5 to 7 days maximum of 7 days during this sneha panam phase what happens is by intaking of this grida or oil whatever the fat contents in taking by the patient whatever the fat contents percolates inside the body these fat contents usually having a quality to stick on to things which comes to contact with it so when this ghee or oil whatever the fat contents when reach inside our body it comes to stick with the doshas and toxins which accumulated inside our body so next comes the bahya snehana karma and swedana where externally we are oliating our body through oil massage and later by giving steam sudation or fermentation so what happens in this phase is makes the shagasrada doshas comes into the kosha we all know that this ghee or oil will get melt easily by excess heat and it's liquefies and started to flow even though our body is warm but when exposed to excess heat makes the fat content which is intaken by the patient during the sneha panam phase get start to melt and flow but by exposed to excess heat what happens is 
whatever the fat contents that is intaken by the patient during the snehapanam phase is started to melt and flow along with the doshas and toxins that is accumulated in our body and in ayurveda it says that our body is designed in such a way that whatever builded or flowing will automatically comes and accumulated in our kosha that is in amashaya and pakavashaya region and this is taken as an advantage one medicine is advised in the next phase and which helps to expel out doshas easily usually one day before the vamana the mrs therapy the patient is supposed to intake utklesha ahara kapha utklesha ahara which means the foods that helps to aggravates the kapha dosha this is done mainly for expelling out doshas very easily on the next day during the procedure so it is easy to expel out the kapha doshas and toxins on the very next day during the vamana procedure by intaking the vamana aushadha the vamana and virejana two procedures for removing kapha and pitta respectively are like brothers as far as treatment is concerned because the divana pajana karma the sneha panam phase and the medicine administration phase almost all are more or less the same which means the ghee or oil whatever the fat contents is intaking later it stick on to the doshas and toxins which is accumulated in our body and after bahya snehana and svedana procedure it reaches the kosha and when the medicine is administered it flushes out But the only difference is during vamana kapha doshas and toxins expels out along with the medicine while in virejana the medicines get digest and pitta doshas expels out along with the toxin the medicines get digest and pitta doshas and toxins through the loose motion when it comes to virejana there are many types of virejana sadha usually on the basis of type of medicines we are using on the basis of purpose on the basis of dosage and all various types of virejana are practiced it can be chosen like snigdha virejana where usually oils like castor oils is used while for some patients we advise nitya virejana where on a daily basis give a small amount of the virejana aushadha means the medicines for the loose motions we give while in sadhya virejana instant purgation therapy where usually the sneha panam procedures is not done like this a variety of virejana sadha which been choosing by a physician after a proper analysis of your doshas and the disease condition and the physical status of a patient the next phase is samsarjana karma usually after this vamana and virejana our digestive fire will be comparatively low especially in case of purva karma yukta vamana and virejana where a patient goes through many phases like 5 to 7 days of sneha panam then a bahya snehanam so usually after these procedures the patient will have a low digestive fire so what samsarjana karma means reestablishing the digestive fire after the procedures so the samsarjana karma usually around 5 to 7 days depending upon the vegas vegas means in case of vamana how many times a patient supposed to vomit how in case of virejana how many times a patient passes the motion and content of vomitus by analyzing all this a physician plan a samsarjana karma diet plan according to that in samsarjana karma after this vamana and virejana we follow a diet like peya vilebi agrudha yusham krudha yusham agrudha mamsarasam krudha mamsarasam which means we starting from rice gruel with less rice and more water and then vegetable soup like this the diet goes on the next panchakarma is vasti or vasti we called it's nothing but enema but differ from usual enemas mainly we are having two enemas asthabana vasti or yuksha vasti or kashaya vasti we use these terms as synonyms asthabana vasti kashaya vasti yuksha vasti which is the enema with decoctions and another one is anuvasana vasti where the enema is done with oils vasti is an important treatment in ayurveda because of its benefit and is said that vasti is said to be agra aushadha for vada rogas it says that one can treat any sort of disease with vasti and is said to be ardha chikitsa which means half treatment that much importance is there for vasti in ayurveda the number of enemas and the types of enemas planned by physician on the basis of condition and chronicity of the disease and patient the final panchakarma nasya which is the nasal installation therapy which is specially indicated for the urdhva jatrugada vigara which means the disease manifest above the clavicular line usually in this procedures medicines like oil powder swarasa which means juice of leaves and all it is used depends on the condition usually nasya is done after a bahya snehana by giving a local massage over your face after mukhabhyanga vises after 
a local abhyangam means after a local massage over your face and its vedana procedure fomentation therapy mainly two types of nasya is there on the basis of dosage marsha nasya and pradimarsha nasya in which pradimarsha nasya can be done on daily basis because of its low dosage so these are about panchakarma that i mentioned right now maybe one percentage of what panchakarma is and panchakarma is chosen by your doctor on various aspect by analyzing the dosha predominance by analyzing your strength by analyzing the chronicity of disease it's been totally depends on the physician's analysis for further information about panchakarma treatments you can speak with your doctor on number shown below